The focus of this video is MEN type 1 or multiple endocrine neoplasia type 1. This means that there are multiple endocrine or hormone producing neoplasia or tumors and this is the type 1 variant we are talking about. Hormones are chemicals that are produced in one part of the body and then travel throughout the body along with the blood to exert their influence at their target sites. These tumors are rare, approximately one in a million. They are heritable, hence a proportion of these tumors are passed down the generation through autosomal dominant means, which means that if the parent has got the genes, these genes will be passed down to the offspring. Hence, it can run in the families. However, how these genes are expressed may vary from one generation to the next. The tumors hence may produce hormones and hence they are functional tumors. There will be too much of the hormone that that site produces giving rise to symptoms or they may be non-functional. There are no hormones being produced but the mass of the tumor poses a risk and it is this risk which can be quite variable from the relatively benign to highly malignant, although they tend to be towards the benign spectrum. In this cartoon, you can see the outline of the pancreas, the thyroid and the parathyroid glands, and a disproportionately large pituitary gland. Hence the mnemonic three Ps, pituitary gland, parathyroid gland, and pancreas or the islet cells being the great majority of the tumors produced. The commonest of course is the parathyroid gland, hence the simplification of 3Ps is not straightforward. The true picture is as follows. Primary hyperparathyroidism is present in greater than 90% of the patients and commonly starts being symptomatic in age 50 or above. Within the pituitary gland, it's the anterior pituitary gland where these tumors are produced and these are responsible for 10 to 20 percent of the tumors. The prolactinoma, the growth hormone secreting tumor, the corticotropin secreting tumor or its non-hormone secreting variant. And lastly is the enteropancreatic tumors that form 60 to 70 percent of which the commonest is the gastrinoma causing Zollinger-Allison syndrome, others being insulinoma, vasoactive intestinal peptide secreting tumors, glucagonoma, pancreatic polypeptide secreting, and normal non-hormone secreting, bringing up the rear. And there are yet others which I'll discuss further. Within the three Ps, hyperparathyroidism causing hypercalcemia is the commonest presentation. Having said that though, there are other large number of conditions that are associated within the spectrum of men type 1 and I shall show you those next which shows the anterior pituitary hormone secreting tumors here and non-functioning adenoma the parathyroid gland secreting PTH with adenomas the endocrine pancreas producing the hormones I've talked about the other sites such as the thymus skin conditions the uterus causing leiomyomas the duodenum causing gastrinomas the adrenal gland causing ACTH or adenomas or pheochromocytoma causing excessive production of metanephrines and hence very high blood pressure. Cancers of the breast within the lungs there could be neuroendocrine tumors and then coming back at the top pendiomomas or the within the meninges of the brain meningiomas. Hence you can see the wide spectrum of conditions associated with a men type 1 and not just the three P's. Diagnosis of men type 1 must be carried out in a specialist center that has all of the resources needed and this would be through clinical assessment, the biochemical assessment of blood which is highly specialized, scans to look for the different tumor types and finally when appropriate to do the genetic screening for the MEN1 gene which resides on chromosome 11. Management of the affected patient and the families must be carried out by a suitable organization which has the specialist capability to carry this out. The assessments I've already talked about, clinical, diagnostic and genetic. Each Tumor type is managed according to its own criteria, and this is described in my other videos. Patients are then selected for surveillance, and a decision is then taken about genetic testing of the family. Let's look into that a little bit more. Which patients ought to be tested genetically and their families? Any patient who has two or more than two of the main MEN1 associated endocrine tumors, patients with atypical MEN type 1, such as presentation of greater than one men type 1 related endocrine tumor and 
greater than one non-endocrine men one related tumor patients presenting with at least one men type one associated endocrine tumor and a first degree relative with a men one associated tumor patients with multi-gland parathyroid disease adenomas or hyperplasia especially if they present at a young age and finally patients with an early onset relevant endocrine tumors pituitary adenomas and sinomas less than 20 years of age so these are high risk in the sense that they are quite likely to have a genetic component when they first present and clinicians ought to be aware of that. This completes this brief overview. If you have any comments, please do share.